there's an unseen world all around you, and it's filled with bacteria, billions and billions of bacteria. Your bodies are covered with bacteria. The seats that you're sitting on are teeming with bacteria. The food that you put in your mouth, it's coated with bacteria. The plaque that the dentist scrapes off of your teeth, it's globs of bacteria. The air that you breathe is filled with bacteria. Even the beds that you sleep in, if you think that you're sleeping alone, guess what, you're not. <laughs> you're sleeping with bacteria. Bacteria cover every corner of this earth, including the most inhospitable places, like boiling hot springs and Arctic ice. These tiny little creatures are everywhere, and they love the human body. It's warm, it's protected, and it's filled with lots of things to eat. When bacteria find a place with food, warmth, and shelter, they will multiply very fast. Because they reproduce by splitting in half, they can multiply to very high numbers in a short period of time. Now, to give you some idea of how fast, if you take an E. coli mama and you put her in a maternity ward, within eight hours, she will have given birth to more than 16 million baby E. coli's. That's what I mean by multiplying fast. Now, there's over 10,000 different types of bacteria that live on or in the human body. In fact, there are more bacterial cells in you than there are human cells. And there's more bacterial genes in you than human genes. So in other words, each one of you is actually more bacterial than you are human. So turn to your neighbor and say hello to Mr. Staphylococcus on your right and Ms. Lactobacillus on your left. Each one of you carries a community of billions of bacteria with you for your entire life, in your gut, on your skin, in your mouth. Now, it's easy to forget about all of these bacteria because they're really small, and you can't see them without a microscope. Now, we're coated in all these bacteria, but the only time that we really remember that they're there is when we get sick. Disease is our bacteria's way of reminding us we're here, we're here, we are here. So if we're coated and swimming in the soup of bacteria all the time, how come we very rarely get sick? Well, there's really two reasons for this. And the first is that most bacteria are actually pretty harmless. There may be a few bad bugs out there, and everyone in this room is familiar with some of these guys, because it's like the FBI's most wanted list. Anthrax, plague, tuberculosis, cholera. But now think about all the millions of bacteria that you come in contact with every single day and that cause you no harm. There may be a few bad bugs out there, but for the most part, bacteria are a relatively peaceful and passive lot. But the second reason that we don't get sick very often is because the human body puts a lot of effort into keeping bacteria in their place. So I want you to imagine a prison not a Norwegian prison, but a scary, high-security, Alcatraz-type prison. Prison guards, locked jail cells, closed-circuit cameras, guard towers, high walls, guard dogs, barbed wire. These are equivalent to your immune system, I guess a Texas immune system. And this immune system keeps bacteria incarcerated in a type of jail cell away from where they should not be. And now I want you to think about your digestive tract. It's essentially a tube with an opening at one end of your body. It runs through your insides and then there's another opening at the other end of your body. But now think about this tube as a bacterial prison. As long as the bacteria remain within the tube, they will be kept fed and warm and allowed to survive and multiply. But if they should happen and try and escape from this tube prison and cross into the more sensitive parts of your body where they're not supposed to be, like your blood, your heart, your muscle, your brain, they will be eradicated by the immune system prison guards. Your digestive tract, your skin, your mouth, your genital urinary tract, these are all bacterial prisons where bacteria are kept incarcerated and away from the more sensitive parts of your body by your immune system. Now, these prisons are chock full of bacteria and they live there peacefully as model prisoners. 
But every once in a while, a really bad bug will get into this prison. And now this bacterium is not happy with incarceration and wants to escape. And prison escape attempts are what cause disease. So how do the bacteria escape? Well, just like prisoners who escape from jail, there's a number of different ways the bacteria can escape. So a prisoner can dig tunnels, scale walls, wear disguises. Every prisoner has a different technique to get out of prison. So let's talk about some tricks that bacteria use. So one technique that bacteria use that we're gonna talk about is what we're gonna call the laundry cart escape. So just like a prisoner that buries himself in the laundry cart and then gets rolled out of prison, hidden under those shirts and towels, certain bacteria will burrow into specific cells in your body and they hide out undetected by the immune system prison guards. Now these bad bacteria then get chauffeured around inside your body to places where they're not supposed to be and they cause disease. A number of bad bacteria that you are familiar with pull this laundry cart trick, including salmonella and tuberculosis. Another trick that bacteria use to cause disease is something that we're gonna call the fake mustache escape. So just like a prisoner who puts on a fake mustache and a prison guard uniform to disguise himself, be, to be able to escape out of jail unnoticed, certain bacteria will disguise themselves to avoid being detected <laughs> by the immune system prison guards. Some use a Harry Potter-like cloaking device. It's called a capsule, and it coats the outside of the bacterium and makes it relatively invisible to the immune system. Now, this allows the bacterium to be able to move around inside of your body and cause disease. A number of bad bacteria that you're familiar with pull this fake mustache trick, including strep and anthrax. And a third technique that bacteria use to cause disease is something that we're gonna call the Molotov cocktail escape. So just like a prisoner who throws a homemade bomb to blast open a wall or to injure the prison guards, certain bacteria make what are called toxins. These toxins are bacterial Molotov cocktails that are thrown at certain cells in your body where they cause damage and that's what leads to the disease. So a number of bad bacteria that you are familiar with use these Molotov cocktails to cause disease, including E. coli, diphtheria, and whooping cough. But now in a dramatic manner that could have come straight from a prison movie, the bacterium that causes cholera throws a Molotov cocktail that causes the sewer pipes to open, and the bacteria escape on a wave of diarrhea. <laughs> now, <laughs> Whenever these prison breaks happen, we feel sick. And to stop the prison breaks, we use antibiotics. Now, antibiotics are fantastic drugs because they can kill a bacterium without harming a human by recognizing a target that's only found in a bacterium and not a human. They work like a key in a lock, very specifically finding and binding their target, which leads to an activation of the bacterium. But now, remember, there's over 10,000 different types of bacteria in the human body. And most antibiotics will work very, kill off bacteria very indiscriminately, more like a poison gas. So as you can imagine, this is a problem because you eliminate a lot of those good prisoners. So, if you can um, imagine, the bacteria have evolved a lot of simple and effective ways to avoid being killed by antibiotics. And importantly, the genes for these antibiotic resistance mechanisms are shared among bacteria very promiscuously. So as you can think about this, after these dr dramatic uh, bacterial die-offs that happen following a prison break, the remaining prisoners are going to rapidly share whatever antibiotic resistance genes that they have to avoid being killed during the next prison break. So this is like prisoners sharing gas masks following a poison gas attack. So now, remember, this prison inside of you is chock full of these peaceful model prisoners that cause you no harm and they remain passively in prison, kind of like Norwegian prisoners. But <laughs> let's say that a few bad bugs move in with Molotov cocktails, which they start to throw trying to escape. Well, now you notice the bacteria because you feel sick. So you go to the doctor, you get some antibiotics to stop this prison break, and you take them. 
The antibiotic, like a poison gas, wipes out most of the bad bugs as well as many of the peaceful prisoners. So now you're feeling better. The prison break has been stopped. So you stop taking the antibiotics earlier than the doctor prescribed. So what happens next? Well, let's say that one of these peaceful prisoners is already resistant to the, to the antibiotic. It has a gas mask. So when half of the prison dies off from this antibiotic Armageddon, it multiplies fast to occupy all of those empty jail cells. And now let's say that all of the bad bugs weren't killed off during the poison gas attack because you stopped taking the antibiotic early. So one bad bug is still alive. Now one of these peaceful prisoners shares his gas mask, the gene for antibiotic resistance, with the bad bug. Now this bad bug is resistant to the poison gas. It can multiply fast and even worse, it can go on to infect another prison. It becomes more difficult, if not impossible, to stop these prison breaks because the bad bugs have acquired new superpowers. They've morphed into supervillains that are unable to be killed by antibiotics. And this scenario is one example of what has been happening ever since antibiotics were introduced into the market. Ironically, the extended exposure of bacteria to antibiotics is the cause of the emergence of antibiotic-resistant bacteria. And remember, bacteria are everywhere and they're sharing genes with each other. So all of the bacteria that are exposed to antibiotics, including the millions of peaceful model prisoners that cause you no harm, can share their antibiotic resistance genes with the bad bugs who do cause disease. Now, this has led to the emergence of a whole new crop of supervillains with scary sounding Halloween type supervillain names like Methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, otherwise known as MRSA, Vancomycin resistant Enterococci, otherwise known as VRE, and Carbapenem resistant Enterobacteriaceae, also known as CRE. Now, these are monsters you don't want showing up at your door at trick or treat. So, what can we do about this problem? Well, first of all, doctors should not prescribe antibiotics to their patients unless they have a bacterial infection. Viral diseases like the flu or a cold can't be treated with antibiotics because they only work against bacteria and viruses are not bacteria. If you have a bacterial infection, take the complete course of antibiotics prescribed or you may be promoting antimicrobial resistance. And don't take over-the-counter antibiotics, which are freely available in many countries. Patients who experiment with self-medication breed lots of antibiotic-resistant bacteria. But now the best long-term solution is to invest in new antibiotic discovery and development. Our current stable of antibiotics is fast becoming obsolete because infectious bacteria over time have developed resistance to them. But new antibiotic development has decreased dramatically with only two new classes of antibiotics developed in the past 40 years. We are struggling to contain these bad bugs that are constantly attempting to break out of prison because they have come up with counter solutions to all of our methods of incarceration. In order to keep these unruly supervillains in jail, we need to come up with new and more powerful weapons to squash their prison breaks. And remember, the weapons that we do have work like a poison gas. They very crudely kill off all of the prisoners, good and bad, rather than just targeting the criminal masterminds that are responsible for the prison break. What about developing new antibiotics that specifically target the escape tools that are used by the bacteria? The laundry carts, the fake mustaches, the Molotov cocktails. By specifically targeting just the bad bacteria that are responsible for the prison break, we may be able to avoid this rampant sharing of antibiotic resistance genes that typically follows the indiscriminate killing of all of the citizens in the jail. And hopefully, this will avoid the emergence of yet more supervillains. With new antibiotics, we can maintain the upper hand against the rise of the superbugs. Thank you. Thank you.